All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power, and I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you today is going to be about Phil Heath and The Rock. Now, we haven't really heard much from Phil lately. Um, he's been kind of quiet. He didn't do the Olympia this year, obviously, as we know. So this was the first Olympia that he's missed um, since his first Olympia win. Now, he posted this picture with The Rock. Apparently, they were doing some kind of photo shoot together. Now, interestingly enough, also in this photo shoot, is uh, The Rock's business partner, manager, former wife, um, Danny Garcia. Now, the reason this is interesting is because not only is The Rock in this picture, but the fact that both of them are in this picture, and they are both promoting Athleticon. The Rock is running Athleticon with Danny Garcia. They're doing it together. So the fact that Phil is not just pictured with The Rock here and is also pictured with Danny, I think is interesting. Now, the photos were taken by Per Bernal, and also uh, Phil Heath had the caption, Arm Day was a success at the Iron Paradise, which is The Rock's gym. Nothing like a good old family training session. Thanks to Per Bernal and Cherie for getting our good angles. Now, he also tags Dave Rienzi, who I'm assuming is the guy on the far left-hand side. To be honest, I'm not really sure who that is. Now, another reason why this is interesting is because of Athleticon. We know that The Rock and Danny Garcia are promoting Athleticon in 2020. It's going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and as far as we know, it's going to have professional bodybuilding with a tremendous amount of prize money is the speculation that we're hearing. Now, particularly to me, one of the things about this that was also interesting is the date that this photo was taken because we do know the exact dates that Athleticon is going to be held. It's going to be held on October 9th through the 11th in 2020 in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, this picture was taken yesterday on October 10th, exactly one year from the 2020 Athleticon date that's been announced. So the reason why I think it's interesting is because this is you know, speculation that Phil Heath is going to be involved somehow with Athleticon. Maybe he's going to compete there. We know he didn't do the Olympia this year. Could this be the next show that Phil does? Now, this is going to be post-2020 Mr. Olympia. So if Phil does do the Rock show, would that mean he would do the Olympia as well? Because October is just one month after September. So it would only be one month after the Olympia. So if Phil were to do the 2020 Mr. Olympia, he could just stay in shape and continue prep um, and go ahead and move on to Athleticon just a month down the road? Or could Phil possibly only prep for Athleticon and skip the Olympia um, in an effort to win you know, this alleged massive amount of prize money that we're supposed to see at The Rock's new show? Or could Phil have some kind of promotional capacity or some kind of promotional role with Athleticon? Maybe he's not even competing, or maybe this is just a, a promotional photo shoot, or maybe it has nothing to do with Athleticon, but honestly, I think that's yeah, I think it has to have something to do with it because of the fact that The Rock and Danny are both pictured here. Again, I think the date is significant. The fact that it's exactly one year away um, you know, from the actual event and the fact that they had Per Bernal, who's one of the best photographers in bodybuilding right now, probably one of the most sought after photographers, um, doing a professional photo shoot with them. To me, that suggests there's some kind of reason for this photo shoot. And to me, the reason would be to promote Athleticon. That's got to be what it is in my mind. So again, it's pure speculation, but I think to me, you know, something's going on with Phil Heath and he's going to have some kind of involvement with Athleticon 2020. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully it's going to be a competitive, um, some kind of competitive role there. All right. So the next story that I have for you guys today um, is about Brandon Curry and Dorian Yates yet again. Now I gave you guys the first report um, of Brandon's response to what Dorian Yates had to say about him. Now, this one, I want to thank Roger Lockridge for sending me this. He actually wrote this article as well. Um, and this was before the statement given to Fitness Vault. So this was the first statement that Brandon actually had on the matter. Um, and it's a little bit more interesting than the Fitness Vault one. So Barbend reached out to Brandon Curry first. And this is what Brandon Curry had to say, um, according to Barbend. So in a nutshell, it's Dorian being Dorian. Nobody did it harder, stricter, and as hardcore as Dorian did. We got one legendary video to prove it. He can have that. I'll just inarguably give that to him. He needs that. It's his legacy. So, of course, bodybuilders didn't work as hard as he did. Hell yeah, we may rely on more technology or PEDs. So this makes his way and his era better. Simple as that. You know why? He says so, and some others would agree with him. We know... His way made him a champion, and some may say the most badass, hardest working, blue collar and grainy bodybuilder that ever lived. He can have that. But this guy right here, referring to himself, is completely different than him, and I'm totally cool with that. I got to watch a video the other day that put the 1993 Dorian and 2019 Brandon head-to-head, -head, pose for pose. 
I love that comparison, and I'm happy to be just who I am as well. I'm sure he can attest to how not winning your first Olympia 100% on a vacated title makes you more dangerous if you do improve and continue. So that very last sentence to me is the most important part of that statement. That's the part I like the most about this because he's referring to the first Olympia that Dorian Yates won, which was the first Olympia that Lee Haney had retired for. So Lee Haney was never beaten. He won eight Mr. Olympias, retired after the 1991 Mr. Olympia, and for the 1992 Mr. Olympia, the title was vacated. And that's what Brandon is referring to in that last sentence. It's exactly like what happened this year. Well, not exactly like, but the returning reigning Mr. Olympia was not at Brandon Curry's Mr. Olympia in 2019. It was a different reason, the reason that Sean Roden wasn't there, uh, but it's the same situation. So he's saying both him and Dorian won their first Mr. Olympia on a vacated title. Now, if you read it again, he says, I'm sure he can attest to how not winning your first Olympia at 100% on a vacated title makes you more dangerous if you do improve and continue. So he's also saying not only did Dorian win his first Olympia on a vacated title where there wasn't a returning defending champion, but he's also saying the Dorian that won that 1992 Mr. Olympia wasn't the best Dorian that we ever saw. Dorian did continue to improve um, and look better on stage, specifically maybe 1993, possibly also 1995 were two of my favorite years of Dorian Yates. But this is my favorite part about Brandon's statement, because if you look at Brandon's track record, Brandon has a history of getting better from show to show recently, continuing to improve and get better. So he's making the comparison, Dorian won his first Olympia on a vacated title, continued to improve and get better. So he's implying that he can do that too, and he can compete at the Olympia next year and look better. Maybe Brandon can win maybe even more than one Mr. Olympia. Maybe he can continue to win. And I think he also makes a good point in this statement that him and Dorian have two very different physiques, and Brandon says he's fine with that. I mean, if you look at the two physiques, maybe Dorian did have better conditioning. Actually, Dorian definitely had better conditioning. He was grainier. He was harder. He was freakier. He was bigger. But Brandon Curry has a completely different look to his physique. He's more aesthetic. He has better flow. He has better lines. I think he has better presentation. Um, I think he's got a more aesthetic physique. He's got a better V taper. He's just more pleasing to look at. So there, those are two very different physiques, and you can make an argument for one over the other. Um, but I think overall, you know, Brandon Curry's physique is something different than what Dorian Yates had. And Brandon is saying in this quote, he's fine with that. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this whole Brandon Curry versus Dorian Yates thing back and forth. Who do you guys think is right here? Do you think Dorian is right that Brandon didn't have very impressive conditioning or that Brandon wouldn't be top six in the 90s Olympias or that Brandon looked like a, a six weeks out version of Dorian Yates from a conditioning standpoint on stage at the 2019 Mr. Olympia? Or do you agree with Brandon Curry that Brandon has his own physique, his own look, um, and, and that should be fine? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is going to be about Cedric McMillan. Now, Cedric is a guy that rarely ever posts on social media, but there is a professional bodybuilding show coming up this weekend that Cedric is competing at, and he posted a posing video on his Instagram page in anticipation for that show. So Cedric posted this video along with the caption, To whom it may concern, I, Cedric McMillan, post this vid video as digital verification that I do look halfway decent before this show on Sunday. Just in case my body goes to shit, as it usually does when the uh, anxiety kicks in. Furthermore, I might drink some alcohol before I go to the show, so if I slap somebody or do some freaky shit, don't hold it against me, especially if it keeps the anxiety down. Drunk flexing hashtag or he tags us high tech nutrition um, and thanks them for still believing in him so after watching the video i do think that cedric looks pretty good here i think he's in pretty good shape for this show coming up um, it is this weekend the show is called the um, fit parade it's in hungary i'm not too familiar with the show the total prize money it says is twenty three thousand five hundred dollars um, beginning on october 13th for the pro bodybuilding they also have pro women's bikini so I don't think they have classic physique or men's physique uh, in the professional divisions, but it says bikini and men's bodybuilding will be on October 13th. And I think this is a show that Cedric actually has a pretty good shot 
of winning here. Now, there are some better names in this lineup than some of the other post-Olympia shows. Um, some of those lineups are kind of weak. You do have Nathan Diasha here. You do have Max Charles here. You've got Cedric McMillan in this lineup. You've got Lucas Osladil. Um, you've got like six or seven other guys in this lineup that are lesser known guys. But at least you do have a total here of 10 IFBB Pro. So it's not just going to be an easy win for anybody. They've got to beat nine other guys um, with some pretty big names in there. And honestly, I think it's good that Cedric posted this update because I think he is the favorite to win this show. I think he's certainly a better bodybuilder than Nathan Diasha, a better bodybuilder for sure than Lucas Osadil, a better bodybuilder than Max Charles. It's just a question if he's going to come in shape and have better conditioning than those bodybuilders. That's always the big question with Cedric. I like to see him do do well. I hope to see him do well um, because this show would qualify him for the 2019 Mister or for the 2020 Mister Olympia if he wins it. So I'm wishing Cedric the best of luck at this uh, Fit Parade Grand Prix Hungary. Now, the final topic that I wanted to touch on here was from my previous video um, where I mentioned the uh, Sandow Trophy that I bought. And I had you guys guess which Mr. Olympia or what year that trophy is from. That Sandow Trophy was just a replica I bought on eBay for like 600 bucks. I would never actually spend, um, you know, I think the only real Sandow I ever saw on eBay was $10,000. I would never actually spend $10,000 on a real Sandow. I just thought this $600 replica um, would be a cool little piece of bodybuilding history to keep in my office, to keep in my townhouse. Um, just kind of a cool like coffee table piece. If I have friends over, if I have people over, um, just if they ask what it is and I can explain to them, this is the trophy for the Mr. Olympia. You know, being Nick Strength and Power and having this YouTube channel, having a replica Sandow is just something that I feel like people would expect me to have. Um, in my house, that's something that I think is a cool talking point. Uh, but no, it's not an actual Sandow. It's a replica, so it's not any of the former Mr. Olympia Sandows. But still pretty cool, I think, nonetheless. So let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comment section down below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. Nick Strength and Power, we are still on the road to 1 million subscribers. Um, so help me get there, guys. As always, Nick Strength and Power. Signing out.